Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO Last Days of Europe. I'm your host, Brother Mocha Lover, and we shall talk about brothers right now. The stars were strewn across the sky like paint on a canvas of a great artist. It was under this canopy that the story as old as time played out like it had a billion times before, but this felt different to these quite literally star-crossed lovers. Not like the stories and books where men and women fall into each other's embrace. No, this was something real and tangible to Lavrenity and Nadia, who had grown up together long enough to find their first partner in each other, and they were infatuated. While Nadia had her eyes trained on a particularly bright star, she felt his hand gently fall over hers. The feeling in her gut went from the nervous flurry of emotion to a true storm, her heart racing. There they shared this moment, nothing but pure joy in each other's embrace, a feeling so warm and true that they didn't hear the heavy-footed steps of a black-clad soldier. Dressed in pure shadow and his face covered, he'd come to take back human cargo, a mission he never failed. The bliss of the moment was too much for Lavrenti to bear, shifting his head down to look at hers. Her amber hair glistened ever so slightly in the moonlight, her eyes dancing from star to star, constellation to constellation. For the first time in his life, he felt like what he was doing was undeniably right. Bringing his hand from hers to her head, he guided her unbelievably smooth face to his, smiling like a fool. He closed his eyes and leaned in, but he never met the lips of the girl who, moments earlier, had been inches from his face. Incredulously, he opened his eyes and refocused his hearing. Standing up, he saw her, struggling in the arms of a shadowy figure. Hello there, my friend. It would seem you fell asleep with this slave, he said, throwing her onto a bed of a truck. Rushing towards him, Lavrenti tripped on a rock and fell unconscious. When he awoke, he woke to a crowd of smiling faces. You're a brother now, Elijah. You're our brother. One of us. One of us. Awesome. We do get to choose a new operative for our soldiers, but we must continue with solidify control or intensify the raids. Let's intensify the raids. From the sky used to, f to fly bombs of all shapes and sizes, raining down destruction and destroying the civilization we have worked so hard to build from the pits of Slavic degeneracy. Over the past few weeks, this hellfire has slowed, with far fewer landing on our fortunate Aryan shelters and buildings, with less resources focused on rebuilding. It would seem that all the more men may be focused on intensifying our missions in territories not yet administered by ourselves, while bombs no longer fall at home. They no longer keep our enemies as weak as we would like, while their racial degeneracy is incurable. We must strike now before they are able to build back up their resources to muster up a defense. Their people will learn to fear the Brotherhood, and soon learn to call us their master. Cool. And an operative can be recruited. Boris, who has a picture. We have Yelena, who is okay for a natural orator. Boost ideology mission effects. I don't think we're really going to be boosting ideology anywhere to anytime soon. Tough. Usually that doesn't even really matter. Capture Cypher, that is a little bit more useful, and he actually does have a picture, even though I don't think he looks normal, but regardless. Pass a day, and we've intensified the raids. Right? Yes, we have. Cool. Solidify control. We fear that while we send our legions forth to bring us closer to home in the Aryan Utopia that is Germany, those we have subjugated have a tendency to forget about us. Forget about the very beings who have brought the very smallest degree of order and civilization to the pit of our lives. We must remind them who they are subservient to, of course, the Aryan race. While many of our soldiers fighting on the front to bring us closer to salvation in the embrace of an awaiting Deutschland, we need forces monitoring our interior to keep the lower caste loyal, given the free reign to do so as they please. To the subjugated degenerates, they shall shoot, rape, and plunder as necessary. Hmm. Very cool. The aftermath. The fire smelled of burned wood and sp spilt the blood. A smell that had become all too common in these parts of Russia. In this particular village, a close-knit community where everyone's happenings were known by awe. When those draped in the black coats with no souls behind cold eyes came to take it, they took their time. The men were shot, some of the women too, in barely two hours. Almost three quarters of the town lay dead in pits. The signs had been there for months. Rumors from travelers told of their treat. And then in the fall of their old protector, the terrifying stories came soon after of beasts of men who came to kill with bloodlust in their mind not loot or pillage. Stories of hundreds dead in towns of less than a thousand, the rest barely alive themselves. Many dismissed them as rumors, rural legends, until the waves of refugees came straggling down dirt roads clogged with mud. Those who could leave did, or at least tried. But most had no choice to but to stay. To hope their fate would be different. Yet naive, yes, but hope is the most reassuring liar. Every night they lay in their beds with dread filling their heads, telling them there was still time to leave on the next refugee train, to find salvation in some other poor corner of Russia. Few did. Now... Only the old stone building or stretch of loose soil marked what used to be a bustling community. Such is the way of the Brotherhood. Almost sounds like a Bible verse with the same, that last little quote there. Such is the way of the Brotherhood. Oh, the Rite of Ascension. Look at that. The Brotherhood's army composition is almost entirely non-Aryan. The Brotherhood can currently exert loose control of the non-Aryans in the territory. We get manpower? Yes, please. A whole 3,000 more. And we should have extreme control. Good, we can purchase... Ooh, military access to the house. Mm, is that really worth it? I'm not really sure. In 
regional integration. Well, last time we did take this territory from these guys. We do have a few columns to go through as well, don't get me wrong. And we're trying to find new agricultural methods as well. Does anyone have to loot, we should say? Loot, loot. Bush could have said yes, they do. First comments. Someone asks, are we the baddies? And my friend, of course we're not the baddies. We're just trying to bring hope and salvation to everyone here in Russia. We are, of course, not the baddies. How dare you? Please line up against the wall. Anyways, uh, let's see. Someone recommends I try out the Nerves of Steel sub-mod, or just mod in general. Uh, I did check it out a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we'll check it out. It seems very weird, very odd, but I'll probably check it out sometime, if you keep reminding me. Take from the unworthy, though. Across the vast domain ruled over by the Brotherhood, there's not much to go around as we would like. There exist Slavs in our nation with more resources than the Aryans who own large tracts of land and hoard resources. Better purpose for their civilizing masters. We must correct this with force. The patrols of Brotherhood forces who keep an ever vigilant watch, or vigilant watch, over the Untermensch, with no ability to watch over themselves, shall undertake those, these redistributive actions across Brotherhood territory, taking from the unworthy and giving to the superior. In this way, we prioritize the more important lives of our Aryans and keep the Slavs and other inferior races in their natural inferior position. We get anti-tank and, and, and artillery. Very nice. Status report, though. A communique from the Gestapo. Basically, the Gestapo. Delivered to unit redacted at 1964.1.30.1. So January 1st. This is an official message to all our officers of the Brotherhood Unit Redacted. In regards to the recent shift on military policy by our leader Guthrum Wagner on Redacted. The degenerate Slav and Mongol populations of lands recently purged of their vile influence prove disloyal and breed instability. The destruction of such subversive elements is one of the most utmost importance. Previous terror campaigns of the Untermensch have proven ineffective at mitigating this rebellious spirit. This has been deemed by Redacted to be because of the lack of reach and poor execution of previous campaigns. By the official order of the Gestapo, all villages must have 50% of the men, 25% of the women, and 25% of the children liquidated upon contact. The use of <clears throat> blunder, plunder, and pillage as weapons of terror as both authorized and mandated. All those quotas may be raised in accordance to local conditions. They may not be lowered. Stay ever vigilant, vigilant as you protect Aryan interests and the interior. Hail, Führer Wagner. Hey, look, a picture of some guy surrendering totally, totally peacefully. Totally not, totally okay there. Totally okay. We're going to scam for loot. Cool, and I have a cup of coffee here to keep us uh, people, us Aryans? Content. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Can we buy some, do we really need support equipment? I don't know. Oh. Empty tank is looking good. Not bad, not bad. Motorized. Do we, really, oh, we could try. It's only 10 PP, right? Oh, wait, we, I guess we no longer get the option. Take from the unworthy. The hooked cross advances. What has held the Eurasian plane back for so long has been the specter of racial inferiority. Slavic men, weak and unable to keep order in their own homes, destroy their own nation from the inside, and now we find ourselves Aryans, the progenitors of civilization. Forced to clean up this mess they have left, and what a mess it is. Across the former Soviet Union lie feudal chiefdoms which wish only to bring us back to the dark ages and destroy Aryan civilization. It is our job as a superior race to mobilize in defense of the civilization that Aryans work to build and Slavs work harder to destroy. If we are true to in our label of Aryan, this would be no difficulty, and the advance of our black ranks will be the unstoppable force to finally civilize Russia and reunite with our rightful Aryan brethren. Very good. Very, very good. I was hoping we'd get another event from the last focus, but whatever. Whatever. Let's see. Anything here? Nope. Anything here? Not really. Ooh. Cool. And another comment was regarding. Ooh. Himmler's England's won uh, against Cornwall. Wow. And cleansed German influence from Britain. Was. Bashkiria is Turkic, not Kurdish. I just said that. Oh man, it's looking really, really hard. Holy cow. But uh, yeah, I just thought it was weird because it was Bash Kurdistan. I saw Kurdistan. I didn't think they were actually Kurds. But one might believe that they might actually be Kurds down there. So. Very cool. Let's get some better guns. Yeah, this, these guys are more Turkic than Kurdish, because, you know, Kurds are mostly down here, so. Makes sense. Well, these guys are t Turks instead. Very cool. We have a total of how many factories? Five military factories. Wow. Well, that's a kind of a bright pinkish-reddish. Nice. Who are they led by? Achenlech. Cool. The hooked cross advances. Plowshares into swords. Now that the Germans have abandoned the Brotherhood, withdrawing its planes from our skies, we must learn to stand alone. We can no longer afford the frivolity of the past, as neither luxury nor leisure could truly shield us from the doom that awaits beyond our failure. However, 
men of our inferiors, who toil in our factories as well as some in the Brotherhood itself, do not embrace this doctrine. In times of utmost emergency, they fill themselves full of goods used better for war. No more. We shall cease this folly. No, no longer shall the Brotherhood tolerate the de decadence of either Untermensch or Aryan. Now what? Not while it is very survival is at stake. Neither worker nor soldier shall make any more trivialities, only war. Only when victory is in our hands well, shall we finally indulge in the spoils of our struggle. Until then, we must serve the Brotherhood, all of us, in sweat or blood. Very good. We must. And we will. Actually, since we have our dude here, you. We got resistance. Right here. I'm glad we got him. Very useful. Initiate a raid. Oh, Italy actually goes to war with Greece? I was not expecting that one. I don't think I've seen that happen before yet. Maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. And they refuse tribute. Ah, <sighs> the scum of the earth, I guess. 236, not bad. 80. We might throw on a little bit more infantry battalions. We just gotta keep an eye on manpower, really. There's only so much men to go around for now. And doing this one costs quite a bit. Plow, shore, plow shares into swords. Dark skies of a Pumheim. To some of them in the Brotherhood, Germany's succession of its campaign of fear and terror is a disaster, for how would the Brotherhood survive without the aid of its distant brethren? However, the absence of any German presence presents itself not only as a danger, but also opportunity. The factories, which had to be hidden during the campaign, can now show themselves out in the open without fear of shrapnel. The brothers who had to man anti-air emplacements now find themselves without the work. To exploit this opening, we shall open more and more plants and manufactories in Permheim, and our newly freed brothers shall find themselves in the aisles of the floors of factories, suppressing dis dissent. The Germans have abandoned the air. While we wait for the return, the industry of the Untermensch, couched by the iron hand of the Brotherhood, shall fill the skies with soot and ash, with neither mercy nor restraint. We get a whole 3% more war support. And hopefully, we can do well here and crush enemies. Wow, you guys are looking really bad. Look at that. Strength level, 66, 65, 64. Oh, they, they are falling apart. Oh, boy. There we go. We're successful. Beautiful. Uh, facilities, workers, schools. I always check this out. Let's see. I mean, expertise is okay. Whenever we get equipment, that's one we're going to go for. Expertise is going up by 0.25. Four, two. Research facilities, probably the one I really, really want most. Thank you. You know what? This is really not worth taking. But I think I want to still want to take it. Can we? Or do we have enough equipment to make these guys better? Relics of the past. If you'd like to read about this one, go right ahead. Uh, indeed, we hope that we can they can aid in a return to the same position of power those commodities were fashioned in and elevate these lands to a respectable and peaceful way of living once again. We must also think of the future. Relics of the past are not too bad. Can we get, make this... 20 cover with? No, we would not have enough guns. We need to focus a little bit more on guns now. Yeah, we already are, sort of, so. There you go. There goes a part of Ostland, which is fine, whatever. Ostland is cool. Purchase anti tank. You know what? It's only 10. We're going to try it again. I said we wouldn't do it, but. Machines of the past. If you want to read about this, go right ahead. We got a civilian factory. Those with these, maybe, Russia will be rebuilt one day. Nice. Another civilian factory is very nice. A city that never sleeps. And the city of Permheim, the home of the Brotherhood ever since its inception, has seen unprecedented growth in both its population and industrial output since the end of the German bombing. For the Brotherhood, however, this is not enough. Our destiny demands more of us, and for the trials ahead, even Permheim itself might not be sufficient. As it always has been, the Brotherhood has taken in this into account, and even though it might not be enough, it will have to do. Tonight the city shall have its final slumber. When it wakes in the morning, its occupants, both Untermensch and Aryan, shall labor. Without exception, we shall increase the quotas, extend the work hours needed to achieve it. We will punish whoever does not meet whatever demand is demanded of them. Whether it be blood, sweat, or even precious life itself, the Brotherhood shall not doubt in giving. It shall not second-guess its desire for the final victory. Military access, we'll see what happens. Uh, I would really like to integrate these guys. There's a lot of, like, serious lag going on. Oof. No one else wants to raid me? I guess I guess we have no loot. That makes sense. Oh, wow. These guys are looking kind of thick. I don't like Zukov. He's getting a little too thick for my liking. Ah. Himmler victorious. Led to freedom shines most brightly when it emerges from the darkness. Oh, boy. And... Rex, the remnant of Rex Commissariat Muscovine is alight with fire. More hands for the smelters. 
From before the end of the bombing campaign, we have kept a stockpile of prisoners deemed a waste of ammunition to execute, preferring to use them as fodder in our initial rituals. In the meantime, they have been a waste of both food and space to keep while contributing nothing for the Brotherhood except to ensure a scant but steady flow of new brothers. As our emergency has demanded of us, we must work these captives until the moment chosen for them comes. The Brotherhood might have found it once prudent to indulge these parasites, but this too will stop. We shall take them out of their pens and prisons and herd them to factory floors under the careful watch of our inspectors and officers. On it, they shall toil for the blood, while they wait in fear and terror for their of the upcoming hour. Even the merit and hardship of their labor will not save them. Lose political power, stability, and get a little bit more manpower. It seems kind of opposite there. We should actually lose manpower and get more stability and stuff like that, but that's just me. That's just me. Nice. 5-5, five, five, huh? Can we actually build something? This will be built in 1966, so we've got a little bit of time before we can actually make one. How was descent around here? 11%. That's not too bad. It's actually going down. Nice. A gun for every hand. As the Brotherhood gathers the blood from its raids and wars, its ranks swell to brimming, the slaves that serve under it now number in the thousands. A persistent shortage plagued it, however. For the average soldier in its armies, rifles and guns are in short supply. The higher ranks in the officer corps use their position to leverage themselves to receive the newest weaponry, all while the bread and butter of the army must fight for scraps or make do with makeshift equipment. To remedy this situation, the High Command of the Brotherhood has seen it fit to approve a new design for a simplified battle rifle in its ranks. Now, every Aryan or slave that fights for the Brotherhood shall no longer find themselves in lack. Their prime shall no longer find themselves without arms, no matter how terrible for her. Is it not true that a rifle at hand is better than none at all? Well, I'll give more infantry equipment and artillery. It's something that we could really, really use right now. This coffee's pretty good, too. And we should do it full speed ahead. Oh, there goes Italy. The Brotherhood has come far. Its factories spit soot and ash in defiance to the sun. Both its Untermensch and Aryans work without ceasing or pausing as the plants churn out waves upon waves of weaponry. No one is exempt from labor. No one escapes uh, the watchful eye of the Brotherhood as it marches into its destiny. The obstructions are clear and none stands in the way of the Brotherhood and our greatest triumph. We shall advance further. We shall expand the quarters, extend the work hours, and find more slaves to serve on the factory floors. No soldier on the front will ever lack for guns nor food. Far from being a crisis, the German departure has given us space to better ourselves as fellow Aryans. Now, from the headquarters in Permheim, the Brotherhood looked over all of Russia and feel the blood of it in its veins hunger. It will not go long unsated. Cool. Shields in the spotlight. Tonight's speaker may be a newcomer to Parmheim, but don't let that fool you. He's a man boundlessly talented and brimming with ideals, and he has graciously accepted or agreed to enlighten us with his ruminations on our people's true history. Please welcome Siegfried Schultz to the stage. The Association for the Preservation of Aryan Culture was a niche club, the APAC, but its reputation for producing excellent ideologues made it closely watched by the Aryan elite. Evidently, Schultz knew this fact well, for we stopped there on a speaking tour just weeks after his arrival. After thanking the announcer, he took to the podium and spoke with intensity, unusual for even Parmheims and Hardliners. Brothers, Aryans, fellow members of the Master Race, you have been lied to. The Zionist in his endless trickery has infiltrated even those nations that profess Aryan values, bending them extricably, extricably towards his will. The Third Reich is but a tool by which the Judeo-Masonic conspiracy directs the populace to a false racial consciousness, leaving the leaders untouched. Do not be fooled. The true Fuhrer of Germany is a Jew, and the only Slavo... Uh, Slavo Aryan master race has the capability to overturn his tyranny and free its homeland once and for all. Schultz ranted in such a manner for the time, evoking confusion and fascination in equal measures from the crowd. One audience member, a secret representative of the Fuhrer, or the Fuhrer, contemplated in silence. Schultz's theories were unusual, but his zeal was impressive. Perhaps he could be of use to the Brotherhood. Maybe just the genius of your time. Germany controlled by Jews? Is he insane? A little bit, probably. And that's okay. Security control. Let's do this once, and the next time we can do secure control, then we'll do secure control as well as war planning. Because I still want even more stability, because war support's pretty good still right now. Utsase defeated. Ooh, the Crimson Flame is crushed. Vazniki. And full speed ahead. Conquest without M. Impressive though our territory may be, we must impress on as our path of conquest advances ever closer to beacon of Aryan light that is the Reichskommissariat. We must remember our cause and that there is no end to the machine of the Aryan Brotherhood. These initial conquests shall prove only a stepping stone in our quest to reach our fellow Aryans and bring back together our kindred spirits. The brave soldiers of our Brotherhood shall thus press forward, forward into the den of uncivilized Slavic destruction where our civil civiliz civilizing grip will be the only way forward with these pitiful, disgusting creatures. We have proven our racial superiority in our conquest of previous Untermenschen, a fact that we will hold high as our enlightened warriors crush their pitiful resistance. Hail, fear, Wagner. Revitalized industry. Very good. Conquest without end. 
on the warpath. The birds chipped them and yawned, and the sun rose over the small, self-enclosed village that marked the end of the Russian land and the beginning of the Black Scourge. The village itself had months before being turned into a watch post, where men pressed into service fe watched fearfully from the sandbags and towers, hoping nothing more than another day without the sighting of another black devil. It had been days since the last raid on the part of the border, and the men had found themselves in a state of uneasy comfort, weary to entertain the idea of peace. One man, the commanding officer of this outpost, knew better than even let himself feel at home. Scarcely sleeping, his energy, dar dark bag under his eyes, and the slim f physique had given him the nickname of the Night Bat, one he wore with pride as a testament to his service. On that specific dawn, the bat, having been awakened since, oh, 200 hours that morning, had been inspecting a ridge with some of his comrades, bo men born, ooh, hello, gods of the north, born and raised in a village proper, one of the last villages left after the rest were abandoned or raised, looking out across the horizon into a great valley with a forest on either side, on either side, really. He swore he could see some movement, subtle perhaps, but his tired mind thought little of it. Only minutes later, he stood now alone. The thought he had earlier caught his attention, and he looked back out across the plain, saw a great banner. He rubbed his eyes and looked again. It was now followed by a mass of black-clad men. Rushing back to the camp, he, the men knew without him saying, the peace was over, and they were here. Nothing good can last. Nothing but nonsense over here, too. Ooh. The close one, Bashkiria. Frim. Bazniki. Let me see. I think it'd be best if we took out the Bazniki first. Bashkiria most likely won't be attacked by anybody. I mean, they could they could be very well attacked. But I don't take these guys out first just because there's, I think, a greater chance for these guys to get killed by Vyatka than Bashkiria attacked by Vyatka or these guys. So, And when I did play this off screen for a little bit, uh, these Bazniki was attacked first. So, Operation Trim. The communists and Tsarists may appear to be factions with opposed belief, but in reality, they're sim merely or simply the common expression of the lesser's race's desire to rule over the greater. King and bred and outdated, the commune, primitive and envious, are one and the same. And Belzniki, this fundamental truth appears in the form of Medorosi, a syncretic organization that could only have been conceived by the by those of inferior blood. The next step for our ritual expansion will be to crush them into dust. While well, it would be easier to just raid them. Not for now. No. They are over. And they do have a raid, and we do have a successful raid, and even though we can I guess we can always do it against Bashkuria, I guess. A Bashkuristan. Point seven three day, huh? Political campaign. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we definitely won't get that one. External investments are nice. Industrial investments are where it's at right now. Reunification of Russia. The purified Aryan race. Soon. Soon. And after, uh, Operation Thrym. Seize their arms? For such a bizarre organization, the Mladorosi are surprisingly well armed. Since our incursion into the Belzniki, some of the cadres have gone underground fighting against the Aryan Brotherhood using a sizable arsenal. It is imperative to our efforts that we root out the location of other weapons depots and confiscate them. While their fighting spirit is commendable, at least by the standards of vermin, they are an obstacle to the rule of the Aryan race and therefore must be destroyed with prejudice. Preferably. Okay, so I gave you orders while you not moving. These, there's no men to oppose us. Nothing here. I was hoping that we could get, take these guys out more quickly. I wouldn't have to leave the focus tree page, but whatever. We're doing well regardless. And as simple as that. I've already read this once, of course. Uh, Caesar arms. Very nice. And we shall integrate them immediately. Well, there we go. That's a, that's quite a bit of lag. The Brotherhood expands ever marching more and more forward. Ooh, we can raid these guys. We could raid against Vyadka, but they're probably looking okay here under the evil Tsar, Vladimir III. 3,000 manpower, they six to ten divisions. That's not bad. Caesar arms. This is all the councils. Why such a pathetic and despicable party attracts so much support is a mystery that even the greatest thinkers of Germany would struggle to answer. The Mladorosi, even after being scattered and disarmed, continue to resist a rule with their beastly supportives organizing themselves into committees and acting as a shadow government. This group, a manifestation of the inability of subhumans to govern rationally, must be shattered if we are to enforce the proper order onto the Bersniki. Very good. There we go. I want to raid them at least one more time before we actually go to war with them. Nice. We have scavenged for loot. Very good. And we have to wait five more days. We'll have this done within six days. So, not bad. And we should be able to beat these guys up pretty easily. I mean, it looks like they don't... They can't really help themselves out that much more, so that's good. And Tricky Dick is gone. Ooh. 
just like my coffee. Oh, hello. Oh, we have no low manpower. A Vyat guy. There's all the councils. Well, Mladorosi silence. Mladorosi put up a fight far greater than we could have anticipated. However, no one can defy the inevitable assertion of racial superiority for long. And their councils, scattered and disarmed, have begun or been put to rest for the time being. We are making excellent progress hunting down the remnants, and few dare to utter the famous slogan of Ta and the Soviets any longer. With the death of their abominable ideology, sanity has prevailed in Valzniki. We can now begin in searching for those of Aryan potential among the populace and strengthening our hold on the region. Uh, actually, how long do we have before they go to war with us? Not long. 16 days might be good enough, though. I'm still going to raid. Ah, never mind. They paid. Equipment? Don't mind if we do. Industrial investments? Absolutely. 15 divisions, huh? Alright, you men better dig in. And we better move fast. Because they're more probably... They're not even halfway done that. That's good. I could make our guys 12 combat width. But... Mm, I mean, we do have support artillery, which is actually pretty darn nice. I don't mind throwing in a, on more stuff here. Like, I want, I really do want more infantry here. We would have enough. 12 combat width is a little tougher. We're going to do it anyways. Why not? That'll be good. We're planning political campaign. Nope. Arm, oh, Army Reserve training. Just in time for a war with Vyatka. More organization and 20% more defense. And more war recruitable population factor. Beautiful. Infrastructural reserve is next for less out of supply and better supply grace. Very good. We got lucky with that one. Oh no, what happened? Hadrish. Oh my goodness. Now don't push in too hard, uh, Ballman. We want to see Hadrish win. I actually want to see what happens with him. No, don't lose. Don't lose. What the heck? I just told you not to lose. Alright, are our soldiers ready? Not yet. My goodness, they take forever. Hey, we silence them, which is good. Oh, we could do this, but I'm going to wait. I'm not going to go to war with them yet. I want to finish off Yatka first. Imposing reason. Of all the warlord states to battle over the ruins of Russia, there were none more hypocritical or contradictory in their ideology than the Mladorosi in the state of Belzniki. The Mladorosi's ideology of monarchical Sovietism captures the absurdity of Slavic false intellectualism better than any other ideology the ultimate infesting Russia preach. These subhumans worship not one but two different forms of oppression that held back the Aryans of Russia from achieving their destiny. The synthesis of these equally flawed but conflicting ideologies produced a government to so bizarre and contradictory in its goals it was doomed to failure. It was only a matter of time until one of their neighbors descended upon them and stamped out their flawed strain of thought and it only seemed appropriate that it was the Aryan Brotherhood, the lone bastion of reason and sanity in Russia, that would step in and correct the situation. The formal members of the Mladorosi have been rounded up and killed. Those who have escaped from our reach will be allowed to live to spread the word of our conquest. They will tell the rest of the Slavic parasites how we treated false ideologues, such as theirs, that seek to undermine the Aryan people. Within Balzniki itself, the combat squads are combing the land in search of Aryans to liberate and traitors to be liquidated or enslaved already. The vestiges of the illogical old government have been torn down in the place we have installed the policies of the Brotherhood. These policies are based on reasoning and logic, rooted in irrefutable racial sciences, not the pseudo-intellectual theories of economics and religion that define the Slavic models of thinking. It'll take time and persistence to cleanse the mistakes of these of the previous rulers, but Belzniki will be freed of ignorance. All of Russia will be. It is hard being the only rational people in Russia. Quite difficult. Can we train one more and do okay here? Mm, no. We're gonna train you again. Only one at a time, though. Because we have only so many resources. Come on, come on, move. Declared war on us. So be it. And we can move in immediately in some areas, which is good. Hopefully we don't start losing here like crazy. And we can move in here too. Great. Now they're slowly winning here, which is not good. But that's okay. There you go. If we throw another soldier, and that's infantry there down there too. Oh wait, that's actually... Oh. Or you guys could just go right there and do that. Boom, there you go. Two divisions should be able to hold out there. It's good. You guys help support the attack. Oh, they stopped attacking. Well, you know what? Just help attack then, too. The Brotherhood needs blood. 
The future of the Aryan race depends on, on renewal. As the weeks go by, the Fiero knows that Untermensch can become complacent and arrogant, descending into degeneracy and <clears throat> jury, as the older brothers fail to beat them hard enough. As its control over the Reich slips, the Brotherhood must restore itself through blood by organizing another Rite of Ascension. Bringing into the fold new men to induct into the Aryan race, we shall cause the Untermensch to cower in terror and solidify our own power. To fail to participate in this periodic renewal will see us weaken further, inevitably, succumbing in future at the hands of our Aryan betters. The Ascension shall be a violent one. To complete it, hundreds of men and women and children of the Slavic race must be killed by our inducted brothers. Their cries of pain and fear, the misery of weakness and death, can only be borne by the most ruthless murderers we can find. Those who fail the task will die in turn. We nourish the soil with degenerate blood. Oh my goodness, holy crap. Less ability, worse part, less attack and defense on core territory. Core territory. I don't like this. But so be it. There's nothing we can do. You guys are still moving in, which is good. Did they really go to war with us with less divisions? They have 6 to 10. We have 15. No, I'm not saying that we're really great and all. But that ain't a lot. Keep it up. You're doing a good job. We must teach this monarchist who owns Russia. Oh, does leading or elected the president of Mexico. Oh, cool. You're going to immediately keep attacking so that we can bust over here. Actually, bust over there to there to there because these guys are giving up the lines already. Beautiful. You can help attack as well. If we can make an encirclement, that would be glorious. Where are they headed to? South? We gotta keep watching. We beat them. The Eves Hevsk mechanical plant has been captured. After conquering the city of Eves Hevsk, We've secured our control over the Evtevsk mechanical plant, the single greatest center of arms production in West Russia. The plant has been long used to pump out enormous quantities of pistols, rifles, and other small arms. After the collapse of the West Revolution Russian Revolutionary Front, Izhevsk and its factory became the property of Vladimir Romanov, the purported successor to Russia's late Tsar, who used it to build up his reactionary forces in a play for regional domination. Now that the plant is solidly ours, we can use it for the same purpose in the Great Patriotic War and West Russian War. It was one of the primary producers of weapons for a huge number of soldiers. We can ensure that our armies are armed with new, modern firearms while our opponents struggle to assemble outdated arsenals. Drown them in a wave of lead. Wow, plus 10% factory production. Holy cow. Yes, please. Well, they continue to abandon the line. Oh, they know their place, and it is not for this world. Glazov, huh? Oh. Monarchists. Degenerates here, I see. Can't cut them off. Do that. Go down there. And you? Come all the way to Biatka. Hopefully these guys will perish. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Beautiful. Do not let them escape. Hmm. These men are failing. Not ideal. Nice. Some men have been distinguished, and we're still integrating that, which is fine. Can we get the event to, or decision? Well, we need to train our troops, really. But, because we're losing, like, stability and stuff, so I don't like losing more stability. Oh, there goes Hadrish. Pull, pull, Hadrish. There we go. Very good. If anything, you guys could probably actually go right there. And slowly but surely we will get to Vyatka. How many minutes have we lost? Oh, 3,000? That's not bad. We killed all 13,000. That's pretty good. Ah, they came back. I see. You know what? Don't even hold them back. Ah, we've taken Vyatka. Beautiful. Degenerates will get their place in the sun. Immediately. Alright, my friends. Operation Skin Foxy. 
The proud Aryan people have always faced persecution at the hands of Eastern oppressors carrying the sword of Islam. In Bashkiria, history repeats itself. The Russians, some valuable of genetic stock, languish under the rule of the Imams. It is our duty as Aryans to clean all things foreign out and expand the frontiers of our ethnos, just as our ancestors, ancestors had done for centuries. It is time, Bashkiria. As much as I want to raid you again. Oh, yeah, we gotta do this one. Yeah. Gain 5,500 manpower and monolithic control. Beautiful. Even though we are lacking a little bit of manpower right now, which is not good. Alright, soldiers are almost there. Come on, keep going, keep going. Alright. Let's see what happens. I really don't want to do a general attack, but just go ahead and do whatever we need to. Once they take Ufa. Uh, well. Well, that's not good. I don't want these guys to get cut off. Hey, there we go. Nice. Very good. And so we don't have that national spirit anymore. That really hurts us, right? Extreme control, good. If we can take Ufa, I think they will collapse. We've already taken one of their states. Ooh. Battle for control of Ostlan continues. Another division, don't mind if we do. While we're really running out of manpower. And they have collapsed, as they should. Komi is looking kind of long. But even they too will be taken out soon. As long as we can scavenge for loot and integrate other regions. Wow, that takes so long to do. Holy cow. Wow, I did not realize it was going to take that long to do. If that's the case, we got to drop them. Threaten the Imams. Despite their humiliation at her hands, the Bashkir scum refuses to know their place. Their religious teachers have been especially active, organizing underground resistance against their new order. We've conquered this land, making us its rightful overlords. Their ways and their god no longer have power here. A coordinated terror campaign against the Muslim religion and its leaders should make that very, very clear. Integrate the Russians, though. The Bashkirs cannot stand up to the fierce and noble assault of our superior people, and they fell quickly. They will be dealt with shortly. Turning our attention to the Russians of Bashkiria, it is clear that we need to begin sorting the wheat from the chaff. There are people of valuable stock here, but their racial awareness has, not, has been hampered by a common cause with the subhuman Slavs against Bashkir oppression. This falsehood will be dispelled with any proper hierarchy established. At least now, our southern flank is somewhat secure, and um, at least until the Sumerians strike at us, most likely. Prepare possible raid. Ooh, how strong is Komi? Ah, Zidanov. They're not that strong, it looks like. We might be able to do well, so let's go. we're going to risk it. Hopefully it won't bite us in the butt, but it might. It, it, you never know. You never know. Siktivkar. So, Brotherhood, Samara, Komi, Vologda, WRRF. Well, I'm expecting someone to eventually try to fight us, but we'll see what happens. Bashkir is pacified. It has taken blood and toil, but the Bashkirs appear to be taken under control. Their race and their religion no longer hold sway, and they have been relegated to a position below even the worst Russians. Their mosques have become meeting places and trial centers for the Brotherhood, and many of their properties have already become expropriated and given to those of more deserving blood. With time, Bashkiria may become a promising part of our realm, and just as the eastern territories are to the Reich far to our west. We shall raid and explore. Oh, they went to war with Vologda. This is the perfect time to raid. They refuse tribute? So be it. So be it. And this is going to take so long to quarry these places. Oh my goodness. Are they coming over here to help to do the stuff? Oh, Vologda is pushing in. Oh man, this is the first time I've ever seen Vologda do relatively okay. They don't even have a focus tree. Led by Vasily Ivonov. Ah, oh, they're probably coming over. Yeah, abandon the line and see what happens. Okay, well, there goes Vologda too. But I will be right back. Alright everyone, sorry about that, but I had to go get something to eat. But anyways, we are here still trying to raid the Komi people, and we're doing relatively okay, actually. Mostly be okay, we, we did really, really well, because, well, they're at war with Vologda, who's also at war with those guys up there. But anyways, Operation Odin. At first glance, the white Russian reactionaries may appear to have common ground with the Brotherhood. Nothing could be more false. They embrace our primitive and Asiatic past. We embrace our Aryan heritage and our future ruling alongside Germans. Enviatka, a member of the cadet branch of the degenerate and depraved Romanovs, who presided over centuries of squalor and race ignorance, desires to revive the powers of this wretched bloodline. Nothing can prove our superiority more than slaughtering this symbol of Slavic filth. Food for the hungry. If you'd like to read about this one, go right ahead. 
But I guess we're not going hungry tonight. And Bashkir, yeah, pacified. And we got that one done too. Confiscate the distillery. Ooh, that's really good. An Aryan arsenal. Arsenal. Ooh, I'm gonna do this one first. It appears that the Tsar had has had a little side business before annexation of Vyadka into the Reich. The monarch's cronies ran a very large distillery that funneled liquor throughout Western Russia, making a tidy profit in the business or in the process, despite their inferiority. They might have been onto something. The distillery is profitable, and there's no reason that we cannot use it for the same purposes. The consumption of alcoholic beverages is a long-time Aryan tradition, after all. And all the better if we raise some badly needed revenue off of it. A return to the status quo of life has always been difficult for Gavar Mustafin. Mustafin. Her mother gave birth to her on June 22nd, 1941. Her birthday became a bad omen that would loom over the rest of her life. When she was two years old, her father and her two brothers died fighting against the Germans within a, the space of a week. A few years after that, her mother left the house one night and never returned. Her older sister took care of her until she was old enough to make her own way. Then she had gone from town to town seeking work. Even in the anarchy of the post-war years, the Russians refused to hire a Bashkir girl like her for anything more than working on their farms or in their stables. It didn't matter that Russia was gone, the Russians were still the rulers and the Bashkirs theirs to rule. The first real hope Gavar had felt in nearly a decade came to at a time of great despair for the Russians. The West Russian Revolutionary Front had collapsed into fighting, or to into infighting, and during that collapse her people seized their chance for freedom. The Bashkirs had reclaimed their homeland and forced all of the Russians who remained to accept their new status as equals, not as superiors. Their people were of different faiths, different cultures, different histories. It was clear that many of the Russians resented losing what little sense of superiority they still had, but that didn't matter. Bashkiria was free. It was not meant to last, though. For a time, Gawar had thought her curse had finally been broken, but for long, but before long, the invaders came. They overran Bashkiria, crushing it in its infancy. The new rulers claimed they, they were not Russians. In fact, they claimed to be hate the Russians almost as much as they hate the Bashkirs. But they looked like Russians, and they acted like Russians, and they spoke Russian. It didn't matter to Gawar whether they called themselves Aryan or not. Some things never really change. Good. Let's see. Oh, we can get more workers, agricultural methods, schools. Agricultural methods are probably what we're going to invest in. Anything else around here? Nope. Thank you. Anything down here? Nope. Let's see. Infrastructure. Let's go and do that one. Why not? Confiscate the distillery. Followed. Ooh, actually, how much? Ooh, we got 38 days left. That's fine. Let's go ahead and do an Aryan arsenal. The so called Tsa and his followers, originally made up of white Russian exiles, were inserted back into Russia by the Germans in order to help fight the West Russian Revolutionary Front, and they received a large stockpile of firearms to assist them in what that in that task. Giving guns to such poor stock seems uncharacteristically foolish for the Reich, but as we all know too well, the Germans are wise beyond measure and will do everything with a purpose. Now that we have toppled Vyatka, that purpose is all too clear. To give the loyal followers of the Aryan race the weapons they need to seize their birthright. Oh, peace conference? Oh! Well, Goring. Oh, Goring! Has conquered Bowman. This this is not a fairy tale land. Wow. So basically, this is a free three-way war, I think, with the West Russian Revolutionary Front fighting Komi as well. Wow. Goring wins the German Civil War. Wow. Look, he looks kind of fat and happy. Oh, Volring. Never change. Wow. We've got 20 manpower. That's not good. The Tars hold destroyed. The Asiatic Slavic hordes, led by the insipid and weak Romanov family, never were able to hold a candle to the might of the Aryan warriors. As evidence, of course, by the collapse in the First World War not so long ago. Now history repeats itself. The Brotherhood has taken the capital of the Imperial Restoration and shattered it in the name of the Germanic peoples. We have conclusively proven the worthlessness of the Romanov bloodline. The two-headed eagle has been torn down from the sky and with the majestic eagle of the Reich triumphantly ascending to replace it. German intervention in Africa. Is this the end of peace as we know it? Perhaps, but perhaps not. Definitely need more manpower. New agricultural methods would be good. Good God, we need to get this done faster. Operation Hymphrax is the name of the Tatar Republic. Operation... If, well, let's, since we can't really do this stuff... Oh, that'd be so nice to get more manpower. If you want to read about this, go right ahead. It takes an errand to keep the soul humans down. For the good, let us help the natural order right itself and elevate the Tatars. Of course. The end of the Romanovs, of course. Of the games. Ooh, improved infantry rifles. Nice. Sweep the planes. We like to read about that. Putting on the bridles. Very good. Uh, Operation Yormungandar. Yor Yormungandar. Modify the crosses. Purge the priests. Which I'm glad we bypassed this stuff. The prayers ignored. Got mit uns. And which Nidhog, Samara, Bifros, Vlogda, Sipnar, Komi. Hmm, we get more manpower that way, which I do want at peace. 
Caesar aid. Not bad. Manpower 1,000. Ooh, which one do we want? Well, let's hear about the end of the Romanovs first. For the second time in the century, the enemies of the Romanovs, the last true monarchs of Europe, have scattered the dynasty to the winds. While their first collapse was inevitable, for a time it appeared that anarchy that followed the West Russian War might give them a chance to reclaim their birthright. Under Vladimir Karlovich's guidance, they reclaimed part of their homeland for themselves and were prepared to reunite the lands of Russia under the divine rule of the Tsar. But it was not meant to be. The monarchists and white Russian officers serving under the new Tsar had spent years preparing themselves for a second confrontation with the communists to the north. A rematch between loyalty and Bolshevism that would decide the fate of Russia once and for all. None of them could have guessed their defeat would come from the south, not the north, at the hands of a far viler enemy than the commies. The Aryan Brotherhood had resolved to do what the cowardly, weak Soviets could not, and finish off the filthy Slavic monarch that had returned to deny the Aryans their own birthright. The two sides clashed in a vicious struggle, but in the end it was the Brotherhood that was proven correct as their armies overran the Tsar's Untermenschen and rampaged across the fields of central Russia. Now memories of the brief Romanov revival are already fading. The Brotherhood's victory reduced what might have been the rebirth of a great empire to a hits historical footnote. In place of a failed dynasty, a new master of the East is rising, not defined by faith and tradition, but by race and violence. Aaron soldiers have burned and defaced the imperial portraits. They have melted the crown jewels down for the gold. In place of the old flag of the empire, the swastika now flies over Vietka. The empire died in 1917. The Brotherhood made sure it stayed dead. Oh, shit. Yeah, we got some of this done, too. That's nice. This grabs even better or more soft attack. That'd be good as well. Alright, so, Samara is not doing too much. Vlasov, they have no manpower. Actually, this is the perfect time to go to war with Samara then. Because if we let them live, that would not be good for us. Vlogda, the WRRF, Komi, they can kill each other off. Samara is the one we got to do. Operation Nitog. The Germans relied on a number of Russian allies to destroy the Soviet Union and its West Russian successor states. The most prominent of these, the Russian Liberation Army, are headquartered in this city of Samara. The ROA has strayed from the Reich's guidance in recent times and now seems to desire the reunification of a decidedly non-Aryan Russia. If we are to prove ourselves as the most loyal servants of Germany, we must act quickly to destroy these disgusting traitors. We must do this quickly. Because even though we could probably take out Komi pretty quickly, even Vologda perhaps too. We don't have the manpower right now. Actually, come on guys, stop that. Oh yeah, we had a, uh, a very good raid. Good lord, we need more manpower. Good god, this is taking forever to get more manpower. And we're probably in a deficit right now. We could train our troops, that would not be bad. Actually, you know what, I'm not going to do war planning because we don't have the political power for it. I really want to train the troops. Even though more stability would be nicer. Because even if we take over these guys, we'll have like no manpower. And I can't imagine these guys have that much manpower either. Oh, actually, that quite a bit, 7,000? None? 7,000? Vlogda, you gotta hold on. Because we might end up in a two-front war, which would not be very good for us at all. Yeah, I want that 1,000 manpower. It's not much at all, but we've got to have it. Hmm. How many divisions does Samada have? Sabotage or tank? Zero. Up to 11, which is not bad. We have obviously more. And we can now commence war. Alright, so we got to be careful about this. You guys are going to go here, here, here. That should cut them off. You guys are both going to come here, but really you are going to go there. You are going to come all the way down here. You two are going to come here. Arsk, Kazakh, good. You guys also go to Arsk. Uh, and then, but you are going to go this way. Simbersk, you guys go to the same thing. Try to cut them off. We'll take both of you to come here. You are just going to try to help encircle these divisions, though. You are going to help keep these divisions. Uh, well, actually, are they going to attack us? Where are they headed to? You two keep these guys in place. You move up, and you also attack in place. Let's see what happens. The goal is not to win, just to encircle and destroy. Well, that sucks for the Central Siberians. Nova Siberia is looking pretty thick. Very good. If we could race and get to Samada quickly, that'd be great. But I don't think we really can. That's going to be pretty difficult to do. Ah, they've caught us. I see. Oh, all of you, you guys are going that way. Ah, I see. I see. Huh. You hold as well. You come down here and cut them off. And then cut them off some more. This should be okay. Hey, the first one supplement. The first of many. Hopefully we can beat these guys up and do okay here. Uh, you guys go here then. 
Go there, go there, go there, go there. We could get in circle here, which would not be very good, but whatever. Well, if we do that, that'd be good. At least we have one division in circle, which is pretty nice. Divine Man of Siberia, very good. Go right there immediately. Well, we don't need all three of you, but whatever. We're slowly losing there, Soviet. Help attack, help attack. Um, we could get some more, but that would not be enough still to take them out, so let's not be too rash about our takings. You guys go up through there. Cut these, cut all these guys off. Keep these guys in place. Kill them off. Taking over the river is never a good idea, but whatever. Good. Fan out, fan out. Come on, get in there. Oh, you piece of crap. You piece of garbage. That's the case. Well, this division is going to die then. They died over there. That's good. Oh, we scavenged for loot. Don't mind if we do. Hmm. Starting for supplies, I see. Good. Keep them in place. How many minutes have we lost? Too many. 6,000. Wow, that's quite a few. What we could try, though, is right here as an encirclement. Boom, 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 boom. Maybe, maybe not. Assist them. Destroy them. Alright. How are these guys looking? They're still alive. We're actually doing probably better than enemies who are north. Boom, 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 boom. And? What's happening? Harold Wilson elected English Prime Minister. Well, okay, well, whatever. Good luck with that. Don't really care right now. We got bigger, much bigger fish to fry right now. Holy cow. Good. Good. These two divisions will die, hopefully. And we can conquer everything down here. End of the South... Oh, that was fast. End of the South African War. That was really fast. These guys are already cut off. Immediately attack. Do not let them through. We might just have them. What are they doing up here? Oh, they finished them off up there. We've lost about probably 20,000. 10,000. Cut off 40,000 enemies. Very good. As you can tell, I might be concentrating very hard right now to ensure that we get all the proper areas needed to win the war. Yes. Go, go. Oh, that should be enough. That should be enough at this point. Ooh. Oh, they're super close. If we can get this last few tiles, we will have them. There we go. That should be it. Boom. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And before either one of these two nations have has capitulated, retain the loyal. Among the ROA, there remains those who never stopped obeying the will of the Germans, even as their Slavic leadership succumbed to the radical instincts and became increasingly corrupt and self-motivated. These loyalists have first-hand ex exposure to the glory of German national socialism and are eager to continue working for a Germanic future. They will be able to retain their prior posts, provided they meet our racial standards and loyalty tests. Next up, it's most likely these guys that we gotta kill off first, but let's see what happens. Where's the capital? Oh, it's over the Kostolama. If we went to war with Comey, we would not be able to take out their capital, so that's quite unfortunate. So it's going to be between us and the West, the revolutionary, or Russian Revolutionary Front, to kill off. Spend the political power for that, so that'd be good. Because in tomorrow's video, we will be able to probably unify all of this part of Russia. Return the loyal. Ooh, we declare war on Comey. Hmm. 
Vlogda. Oh, Komi's gone. If we rush, we've got a thousand manpower. We might be able to take out these guys first. Maybe. Or Caesar aid. Do we need more infantry equipment? No, not really. So, instead, we shall do this first. A comprehensive strategic analysis. Very good. Followed by... Operation Bifrost. In a world where taking the blood, or taking of blood is necessary to survive, pacifism is the weakest and most despicable philosophy one can hold. In Vologda, general of the West Russian Revolutionary Front, doomed his people to obsolescence when he backed down from the war against the Reich, ever since they formed a laughable attempt at democracy, pretending that the ballot is a worthy substitute for the bullet. We shall shatter these delusions and return the rule of arms to the region. If we can move fast enough, we can do well. If you'd like to read about Komi, right here. Operation Slipner. Three Aryan prisoners silence the subversives, and Komi's bickering ended. I'm enjoying this too much. Hmm. Hmm. Guns looking great. Oh, we need more. Oh, you definitely need more anti tank. There, go do this one. I'm gonna keep stuff on guns all the time, but. Or artillery. That's not bad. We definitely need more manpower, though. Oof. Ooh, we might not be able to get to them. We might not be able to get to them in time. That would suck. That's alright. That is okay. Because the West, the revolutionary Russian front, they should be out of manpower. But yep, they are out of manpower, just like us. Eight to eleven divisions. We have more. They do have motorized, which is dangerous. But hopefully, we can do well. Because even though resistance is going up, how many more days do we have left here? Forty-three. For Bezniki. Operation Bifrost. Onward and upward. Take, 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 take. Kostrama has been neutralized. Hopefully we can get at least one province here. Kostrama is almost neutralized. Everything else is going to collapse very soon. We're doing very, very well. Even if we don't get a be or if we're not able to take anything, at least hopefully we can give a lot of resistance to the WRRF. Look at that. So good. So good. Take, 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 take. Keep moving. There'll be no incompetent movements here. A little bit of lag. We can go ahead and secure control, but let's see. Uh, we need to spend political power coring stuff, so. Beautiful. Let's see if we actually get anything out of this. Hopefully we do. Almost 300 million in terms of GDP. Who cares about GDP? LBJ inaugurated. Wow. The Levantine Confederation. Kennedy promised, but can Johnson deliver? Alright. Is it over? No, it's not over yet. Ah, uh, the shield broken. The obedience ensured. We have been, as some might say, cucked out of a victory here. But no matter. They shall rue the day that they won. Caesar aid. The Germans continued sending large amounts of aid into Samara, even as ROA de deviated from the path of the Aryan race. This they may seem contradictory of their mission, but we know better. This can only mean that the Reich recognizes the racial vigor of some present and sought to assist them. They will surely not object now that a more viable Aryan organization has seized control of the premises. A stockpile of German arms and equipment will bring our fighting force that much closer to the genuine Wehrmacht. Quite unfortunate that we could not take the territory, which doesn't make any sense in the warlordism of Russia. But whatever. Actually, hmm... Do we dare risk this? This is the last nation we can do. We might as well. Ooh, the right of ascension. Ooh, we could use that so badly right now. We get 10,000 manpower. Caesar aid. Embrace the fascists. The ROA was, despite its initial allegiance to the Reich, primarily a nationalistic organization commandeered by Slavs, incompatible with our dreams of the Aryan Russia. This does not mean that every member was necessarily a Slav. Based on the testimonies, we believe several officers from the more extreme factions who have been Aryans attracted by a noble love for Germany rather than an opportunistic desire to gain power. While the vast majority of the ROA does not meet this criteria, those that do will make valuable local administrators and provide a sense of con continuity moving into the Reich. Very good. And we're going to secure control again because we need more political power. Oh, we're so close. L less than three weeks away from that. Hey, we got 86 guys. Happy February 1st, 1965. Oh, we're mobilizing slightly more. Nice. Very good. We should be. As we should be. Oh, 48% resistance. Nice. That's good. I'm sure we got some really bad resistance down here too, right? Ooh. Territories. Wow. Wow. Look at all this. Holy crap. That's not good. Ooh. Now I think resistance down there is good enough for now. We're gonna keep it like as low as we possibly can around here now, because even though this will rise up more, I'd rather do this region a little bit more since I don't want it high, especially in Samada. Over 1.4 million people live there. Wow. 
Can we actually win here? If they don't have soldiers on the front, we could probably we might be able to win. And get one more thing here. They refuse tribute? Of course they would. Come on, please don't show up, please don't show up. Embrace the fascists. A member of the master race. Operation Gamma. Oh we go to, Oh we go to war with Gorky first. Interesting. Alright, so as he sat in a prison camp outside Samara. Jakob Becker thought back to the day he knew his life was over. It had been four months ago, his, the day his unit received their new orders. They were being sent across the border to the Reich to help train the soldiers of some warlord in Samara. The Wehrmacht was propping up. Many of the soldiers, Jakob among them, felt a sense of impending doom at the news. Somehow he knew he would never see Cologne again, never make the triumphant return home he had dreamt of making. His fears had proven correct when the warlord Saitler was attacked by some other bandit hold. The armies of Samara went on to battle, and Jakob and his fellow advisors went with them. Their presence made no difference. These invaders that flew the swastika for some incomprehensible reason had crushed the well-equipped but poorly led soldiers of Samara, and within a few weeks of the conflict's start, Jakob had been captured and taken to the prison where he currently wallowed. He was snapped out of his self-pity when he noticed a prison guard approaching, followed by a man dressed in ill-fitting Wehrmacht uniforms, or the officer's uniform, from the last war. The guard pointed at him, and the officer stepped forward. Are you a German? he asked, in halting, heavily acting a German. Jakob hesitated before answering. Yes, why? The officer's face broke out in a huge grin. Oh, that is great. Please follow me. I am so sorry about the confusion. I want you to know we, are, we would never keep an Aryan in prison intentionally, especially with the Untermensch. Where are we going? Jacob asked, or Jakob asked in confusion. To my quarters. I'll give you a chance to clean up and eat a proper meal first. And after that, I want to introduce you to all the other Brotherhood members here. None of us have ever met a Jimmy before. Things might be looking up for once. Wow, 20% more stability and we shall end with Operation Gamma. The Slavic race is feckless and irresponsible, preferring to take what it cannot create with its mega abilities. This is the reason for Russia's Long time backwardness, and it is also the reason that a mechanized bandit army controls the city of Gorky, ridding the good people of the Reich for its own benefit. We should begin to pay back the enormous debt we owe Germany for exposing us to its truths by ending those wretched criminals' reign of terror, but I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow when we shall unify with the West Russian Revolutionary Front and crush them underneath our grasp. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!